Hi everybody, welcome to EVNG 101 training course. My name is Mehmet. I'm a Cisco instructor trainer currently living in Metro Manila, the Philippines. And I assume that uh, you are a newbie trying to specialize in networking and systems and looking for an environment to practice. You may or you may be someone already utilizing some environments such as Packet Tracer and would want to switch to a better one, in this case EVNG. Here even though I might sound like this course is only for networking or systems, well if you have some computers and servers, technically you can do anything. So it is safe to say that uh, this course is theoretically for everyone in IT. EVNG stands for Emulated Virtual Environment, Next Generation. Yes, it's just an environment, meaning it's not a software which emulates a device. It's not a software which simulates a device. Or it's not a software which virtualizes a device. No, it's just a nice software which hosts emulators, simulators, and virtualizers. For example, Dynamips is an emulator which emulates some Cisco routers not switches. VPCS is a simulator which simulates a lightweight computer sporting DHCP and ICMP. KVM is a virtualizer which virtualizes the hardware. QMU is both an emulator and virtualizer. See, they do the emulation, simulation and virtualization. All these technologies are embedded in EVNG and EVNG is just an environment whereby we can use these technologies to create topologies and practice. That's it. So, speaking of emulation, simulation and virtualization, I feel the urge to explain what emulation, simulation and virtualization without going beyond the scope of this course. Okay? So say there is a company called ABC, company ABC, and it, it manufactures a network device. And that device has an operating system on it. And as a network specialist, I am expected to configure IPsec. So we have a network device. It has this component. I see it, it, it has its own hardware and the operating system. And I'm going to configure IPsec. The hardware, the operating system, IPsec. So if I were to ask you which of these three would be the most important you would probably say IPsec because it is the ultimate reason, right? I mean, what would I do with a hardware and operating system in it if I were not to configure anything such as IPsec? So, I need to know what IPsec is, how it really works, regardless of the platform. I mean, the hardware and the operating system. So, the second important part would be I mean, the second important component would be the operating system through which I am supposed to configure IPsec. To me, the operating system is just a couple of commands that I use to configure IPsec, right? The configuration commands may vary depending on the operating system of the device. However, if you know how IPsec works, irrespective of the device on which you are configuring it, you will adapt easily when you're asked to configure it on any device. As for the hardware component, well, I'm not very much interested in what type of processor it is using. Without knowing almost anything about it, I can still configure IPsec as long as I know how it works and some configuration commands of the operating system of the device on which I'm doing IPsec. So I wish I could um, practice all these technologies like IPsec, TMVPN and all before I deploy them in the production, in the wild, using real devices. But remember, when I say real devices, the focus here, <coughs> excuse me, the focus here is not on the hardware. I need to, so, see, I need to configure IPsec. I, and, and so I do it using an operating system. And that operating system has to be on a hardware. This is why we need the hardware. As a matter of fact, 
I need only two things. IPsec, I mean what it is, why we need it, and how it works, and an operating system, just to configure it, right? So unfortunately, um, these operating systems need special hardware. And I cannot afford to all of these expensive network devices, right? So um, somebody, some good guy, develops a program or software which mimics uh, this network device. Take for example Packet Tracer. You click on a router icon, remember, which is not the real hardware. You are on the command line interface, which is not a real operating system. And then you ping another router. And you see some ICMB packets traveling from one device to another which is just an illusion. Nothing is real. So this is simulation. Uh, for example, VPCS, I mean Virtual PC Simulator, is a program written by Paul Meng, which allows you to simulate a lightweight PC, uh, lightweight PC sporting, I think, DHCP and ICM, ICMP, that's it. However, um, it would be much better if I could test it using a real operating system. Today I can find the op real operating systems on the internet, which is what I need, but there is something missing, the hardware. Why? Because the operating system that I download needs that special hardware. And I cannot download the hardware from the internet, can I? I cannot and, and I cannot install it on my laptop, that operating system I mean, because that operating system is meant to run on that special hardware. Somebody, uh, Christoph Fillet, developed a program called Dynamips, which can create that special hardware using my laptop's resources. This is emulation. It's just a software or program which creates that special hardware on which I can install the real operating system. See, Dynamics is an emulator like QMU. I will give you a simple analogy how emulation works. Imagine that that special hardware needs a triangle processor. Okay, so this is the processor or CPU of that special hardware. But my laptop is using a rectangle processor CPU. So what the emulator does is it creates a triangle CPU just looking at my rectangle CPU. I'm, I'm my real CPU, real processor. This is emulation, which is uh, amazing. Okay. As for the virtualization. To me, the simplest definition is um, dividing something physical virtually. Imagine that there are two people sitting in a room of 100 square meters, like this is 10 meters, and this is 10 meters. This is a room, and two people are sitting here. Okay, so this is something physical, right? And they decide to, they decide to divide the room using a piece of chalk like this okay so it's still the same physical room but virtually now it has it, it, it they divided the room using a piece of chalk that's it and they end up living in their own quote-unquote uh, own room of 50 square meters this is virtualization likewise excuse me likewise uh, using a program let's say uh, my laptop has this CPU, this is my CPU, and this is my RAM, and this is my hard drive, okay? Using a piece of, uh, using a program or piece of chalk, I can, let's say this is, I'm just dividing virtually. I can use, say, um, one one fourth of my CPU, one third of my 
RAM and two-fifths of my hard drive and using these virtual components I can create a virtual room I mean a virtual computer I will not call those programs of a piece of chalk virtualizer from now on I will call them hypervisors like for example VMware is a hypervisor VirtualBox is a hypervisor KVM is a hypervisor QMU is a hypervisor see all these simulators emulators hypervisors are in the event and we are going to use them to create topologies and practice that's it so the question is is this event just a software or a program that I can download from the internet and install on my Windows machine well no you can install it on only one operating system which is Ubuntu server that is it so how now, now what do I need now I'll tell you I need a computer okay I need to download Ubuntu server ISO image just like a Windows ISO image and then burn it onto your DVD okay and then install it on the comp on, on, your, on, on your computer now I have a beautiful Ubuntu server then download and install EVNG and practice that's it using this command why this this command I mean so you have to use this command the reason is <laughs> Ubuntu server is has no graphical user interface by default it's just like a Cisco device it's like a headless server like with no monitor no mouse no keyboard so um, if you have no experience whatsoever with any Linux distributions distributions let alone Ubuntu server which has like I said uh, no graphical user interface by default that's why you have to issue this command to install uh, and Ubuntu server is, is mostly a headless server like I said no monitor no mouse no keyboard you may be scared but don't, don't, don't worry why because this is not the only way to install EVNG there are three ways three options the first one is this uh, the first one is what I have just explained it's download Ubuntu server ISO from Ubuntu.com okay and then burn it onto a DVD and install Ubuntu server now you have a beautiful Ubuntu server on your on your on your computer and like I said it has no graphical in interface and it's a headless server you have to use a command line interface and you download and install EVNG using this command and then you enjoy it well this option you may not like it okay option two so the second option is almost the same with one exception you download the Ubuntu server ISO image from evng.net look option one says you have to download Ubuntu server ISO image excuse me this should be ISO right ISO image from ubuntu.com but here you download the Ubuntu server ISO from evng.net let me show you where it is like here if you go to evng.net and download you will see uh, here the full ISO image this ISO image is just the Ubuntu server so what is the difference the difference is this this Ubuntu server is is slightly modified to help you with the installation of both the Ubuntu server and evng it basically it's called this I mean if you just Google you may not have heard of it just enough operating system J E O S you know you it's not like the full Ubuntu server it's just enough operating system Ubuntu server and it's modified slightly modified to help you install the Ubuntu server itself and the EVNG so with this 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 option is much better than the first one if you are completely new to Linux so the question can we install it on a virtual machine using VMA workstation or VXSI yes why not why not of course well I have a much better option here option three this is what I'm going to use 
to install Eve NG. And, and before I end this class and this lesson, I would like to tell you that please remember that I'll be referring to EveNG.net, this website. Let me show you here. EveNG.net. And I would rather you downloaded the cookbook from the same website. See, it has two editions, professional cookbook and community cookbook. The difference is this, uh, the, we'll be using Eve NG free edition, which is called community edition. That's why I need you to download community cookbook. So that's it. So I'll see you in the next uh, video.